on February 29th, we commemorate Venerable John Cassian the Roman, Venerable John Basanufius, Bishop of Damascus, Martyr Theocteristus, St. Leo of Cappadocia, St. Miletius, Archbishop of Kharkov and Akitir, St. Germanus of Dacia Pontica de Borgia. St. John Cassian the Roman was born around 360, probably in Lesser Scythia in Dacia Pontica. His pious Christian parents gave him an excellent classical education and also instructed him in the Holy Scriptures and in the spiritual life. St. John entered a monastery in the Diocese of Tomish, where his friend and relative, St. Germanus, labored as an ascetic. In 380, desiring to venerate the holy places, St. John went to Jerusalem with his sister and his friend, St. Germanus. The two monks stayed at Bethlehem Monastery, not far from where the Savior was born. After five years at the monastery, Saints John and Germanus traveled to the Thebaiad and the desert monasteries of Scythis for seven years, drawing upon the spiritual experience of countless ascetics. The Egyptian monks taught them many useful things about spiritual struggles, prayer, and humility. Like honeybees, they journeyed from place to place, gathered the sweet nectar of spiritual wisdom. The notes St. John made formed the basis of his book called Conferences with the Fathers in 24 chapters. Returning to Bethlehem for a brief time, the spiritual brothers lived for three years in complete solitude. Then, they went back to Egypt and lived there until 399. Because of the disturbances caused by Archbishop Theophilus of Alexandria to the monasteries along the Nile, they decided to go to Constantinople. After hearing of the virtue and holiness of St. John Chrysostom, the great hierarch ordained St. John Cassian as a deacon and accepted him as a disciple. John and Germanos remained with St. John Chrysostom for five years, learning many profitable things from him. When Chrysostom was exiled from Constantinople in 404, since John Cassian and Germanos went to Rome to plead his case before Innocent I. Cassian was ordained to the Holy Priesthood in Rome, or perhaps later in Gaul. After Chrysostom's death in 407, St. John Cassian went to Massilia, or Marseille in Gaul, now France. There he established two Cenobitic monasteries in 415, one for men and another for women, based on the model of Eastern monasticism. At the request of Bishop Castor of Aptia Julia in southern Gaul, Cassian wrote the Institutes of Cenobitic Life, De Institutis Coenobiorum, in twelve books, describing the life of the Palestinian and Egyptian monks. Written between 417 and 419, the volume included four books describing the clothing of the monks of Palestine and Egypt, their schedule of prayer and services, and how new monks were received into the monasteries. The last eight books were devoted to the eight deadly sins and how to overcome them. Through his writing, St. John Cassian provided Christians of the West with examples of Cenobitic monasteries and acquainted them with the asceticism of the Orthodox East. Cassian speaks as a spiritual guide about the purpose of life, about attaining discernment, about renunciation of the world, about the passions of the flesh and spirit, about the hardships faced by the righteous, and about prayer. St. John Cassian also wrote Conferences with the Fathers, Collationes Patrum, in 24 books in the form of conversations about the perfection of love, about purity, about God's help, about understanding scripture, about the gifts of God, about friendship, about the use of language, about the four levels of monasticism, about the solitary life and Cenobitic life, about repentance, about fasting, about nightly meditations, and about spiritual mortification. This last has the explanatory title, I Do What I Do Not Want to Do. Books 1-10 to 10 of the conferences describe St. John's conversations with the fathers of Scythis between 393 and 399. Books 11-17 to 17 relate conversations with the fathers of Panephesis, and the last seven books are devoted to conversations with monks from the region of Theologos. In 431, St. John Cassan wrote his final work, On the Incarnation of the Lord Against Nestorius, De Incarnationem Domini Contra Nestorium, in seven books, he opposed the heresy, citing many Eastern and Western teachers to support his arguments. In his works, St. John Cassian was grounded in the spiritual experience of the ascetics and criticized the abstract reasoning of St. Augustine, commemorated on June 15th. 
St. John said that grace is defended less adequately by pompous words and loquacious contention, dialectic syllogisms, and the eloquence of Cicero, and then by the example of the Egyptian ascetics. In the words of St. John of the latter, commemorated on March 30th, Great Cassian reasons loftily and excellently. His writings are also praised in the rule of St. Benedict. St. John Cassian lived in the West for many years, but his spiritual homeland was the Orthodox East. He fell asleep in the Lord in the year 435. His holy relics rest in an underground chapel in the monastery of St. Victor in Marseille. His head and right hand are in the main church. St. John, called Barsanufius, was a native of Palestine. He was baptized when he was 18 years old and later became a monk. Because of his ascetic life, St. John was consecrated Archbishop of Damascus. Because of his love for the solitary life, St. John gave up his position as hierarch and secretly withdrew to Alexandria, calling himself Barsanufius. Then he went into the Nitrian desert, arrived at a monastery, and begged the Igumen to accept him into the monastery to serve the elders. He conscientiously fulfilled this obedience by day and spent his nights in prayer. Theodore of Nitria saw the monk and knew that he was a bishop. St. John concealed himself again and withdrew into Egypt, where he lived in asceticism until the end of his days. The holy martyr Theoteristus, Egumen of the Pelekete Monastery, suffered for the holy icons under the impious emperor Constantine Corpronimos. 741 to 775. Also subjected to tortures were St. Stephen the New, commemorated on November 28th, and other pious monks. St. Theoctoristus was burned with boiling tar. The holy martyr was a spiritual writer and composed the canon to the Mother of God, sustainer in many misfortunes. St. Leo of Cappadocia fulfilled the commandment to love his neighbor by suggesting to the Saracens who had captured three sickly monks that he take the place of these infirm captives with himself, since he was healthy and able to work. While journeying in the desert, St. Leo weakened and was not able to go any farther. He was beheaded with a sword, thereby laying down his life for his neighbor. St. Melidius, Archbishop of Kharkov, and Akhtir, and the world Michael Ivanovich Leontovich was born November 6, 1784, in the village of Stara Stanzara, in the Poltava district. In 1808, Michael Leontovich successfully completed the Ekaterinoslav Seminary. As the best student, he was sent by Archbishop Platon of Ekaterinoslav to Petersburg, to St. Alexander Nevsky Spiritual Academy. In Russia, the Spiritual Academy is higher level of religious training beyond seminary. Finishing the Spiritual Academy in 1814 with a degree of Magister, or Teacher, he was appointed adjunct professor of Greek. On March 11, 1817, Michael Leontovich was appointed to the office of Secretary of the Academy Building Committee. On July 30, 1817, they transferred him to the Kiev Seminary to serve as Inspector and Professor of Church, History, and Greek. When the Kiev Spiritual Academy opened on September 28, 1819, Michael Leontovich became its first inspector. On February 11, 1820, on the eve of the Feast of St. Melidius of Antioch, in the Cathedral Church of the Kiev Bratsk Monastery, he was tonsured into monasticism with the name Melitius. The tonsure was done by Metropolitan Eugene Borkovidnikov of Kiev. On February 22, 1820, St. Melitius was ordained deacon by Metropolitan Eugene and to the priesthood on February 25th. On August 9th, 1821, Higher Monk Melitius was appointed rector of the Mogilov Seminary and head of the Kutin Orshansk Monastery with the rank of Archimandrite. In August 1823, he was made rector of the Skov Seminary, and on January 24th, 1824, Archimandrite Melitius was appointed rector of the Kiev Spiritual Academy. In October 1826, the Holy Synod decided to appoint Archimandrite Melitius as Bishop of Chigilinsk, a vicar of the Kiev Diocese and head of the Vlatoverk Mikhailov Monastery. He was elected as Bishop on October 19, 1826, and was consecrated on October 21, 1826, at Kiev's Cathedral of Holy Wisdom, Hagia Sophia. With a fatherly love, the saint looked after young foster children, raising them in spirit of devotion to the Church of Christ. The saint particularly cared for the needy, widows, and orphans. He often visited them imprisoned, 
and provided them the consolation of religious services in the prison churches. The saint also was also concerned for the spiritual nourishment of the brethren of the Mikhail of the monastery. With edifying discourses and by personal example, he inspired in the monks the spirit of true asceticism. St. Miletius said, Humility is the guarding sword with which we pass over earth and Hades to reach heaven. In April 1828, St. Miletius was appointed to the Perm Cathedral. Strict with himself, the saint was also strict towards others. To prepare chosen candidates for ordination, St. Miletius himself wrote the so-called Ordinads Catechism for them. In August 1831, St. Miletius was transferred to the See of Irkutsk with the rank of Archbishop. The saint devoted great attention to the enlightenment of the lesser nations of Russia with the light of the gospel teaching. He founded churches in the north of Kamchatka, in the northeast parts of the Irkutsk diocese and along the Aldan River on the tract from Yakutsk to Okotsk. He often reviewed his extensive diocese going to the shores of the Okotsk and Arctic seas to the borders of North America, where the renowned Apostle of Siberia, the priest John Venyaminov, later known as St. Innocent, the Apostle to America, commemorated on October 6th and March 31st, then labored. Journeying through Siberia and along the shores of the Pacific Ocean, St. Miletius frequently interacted with the native peoples. The saint urged them to abandon the error of professing Lamaism, and he explained the gospel truths to these pagan peoples, the Tungus, the Buryats, the Kamchadali, and also the inhabitants of the Kuril and Alutian islands. Because of his untiring labors, the saint's health began to deteriorate, and they transferred him in 1835 to the slobodsk Ukrainsk Cathedral, afterwards the Cathedral of Kharkov and Aktir. Here, St. Miletius devoted his attention to the institutions of spiritual learning and concerned himself with the life and education of the clergy. He raised questions about restoring those monasteries and spiritual schools which Empress Catherine II had closed. The saint was also concerned with combating schismatics. On July 2, 1839, St. Miletius led the celebrations in the city of Aktir for the 10th anniversary of the appearance of the wonder-working Aktir icon of the Mother of God, commemorated on July 2. The blessed repose of the saint occurred on the night of February 29, 1840. After communion with the words, Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, the saint signed himself with the sign of the cross, and after asking forgiveness of everyone, he departed to the Lord. On March 4, 1840, St. Miletius was consigned to the earth by the cursed bishop, Heliodorus, in a crypt beneath the Church of the Cross at the Protection Monastery. From the first days after his death, believing people firmly trusted in the intercession of St. Miletius before God, and they received help, healing in sickness, comfort in sorrows, and deliverance from difficult circumstances. Believers in Kharkov put special trust in St. Miletius during the terrible days of the Great War for the Fatherland which was World War II. The saint predicted the impending deliverance of the city from the enemy. In 1948, with the blessing of His Holiness Patriarch Alexis, the coffin with the relics of St. Miletius was transferred to the Annunciation Cathedral Church, where they remain to the present day, providing a spiritual recourse and prayerful comfort for believers. St. Germanus, the Daco Roman, was born in the mid-4th century probably on the borders of Cassian and the caves in the Diocese of Tomish, in what is now Romania, and was related to St. John Cassian, who was also commemorated on February 29th. St. Germanus, who was older than St. John, was tonsured at one of the local monasteries when he was still a young man. The Holy Bishop, St. Theotimus I, commemorated on April 20th, may have been his spiritual father. In turn, St. Germanus became the spiritual father, friend, and teacher of St. John Cassian, instructing him in monastic perfection. They both lived at one of the monasteries of Dacia Pontica for a short time, and then worked together in Bethlehem from 380 to 385. Later, they traveled to Egypt and visited some of its Cenobitic monasteries. They also visited the hermits of Nitria and Mount Sinai, seeking to benefit from their holy example and wise counsel. Since Germanus and John went to Constantinople in 399 in order to be near St. John Chrysostom, commemorated on November 13th. And around this time, Germanus was deemed worthy of ordination to the Holy Priesthood. When Chrysostom was deposed and exiled in 404, the two saints journeyed to Rome in order to plead his case before Pope Innocent I. St. Germanus completed the course of his life in the early 5th century, perhaps at the monastery established by St. John Cassian at Marseille 
or in one of the monasteries of Dacia Pontica. The inscription on the saint's scroll, Domnul Iasentarirea mea și Izbăvitorul meu, is an abbreviated quotation from Psalm 17, verse 1. It reads, The Lord is my strength and deliverer.